Hey there, I'm Cara from Cara Lee Ford Ceramics. I'm a potter and a pottery teacher. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I would absolutely love it if you take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me make more videos like this one for you. I'm here to show you how to make a lemon squeezer like this one. So the lemon squeezer that I was using at home just didn't work. It let all the pips through and also it just didn't squeeze very well. So being a potter, I decided to make my own. And today I'm showing you how I did it. So this lemon squeezer is a bit special because I added this little extra bit of clay here which helps to catch all of the pips in your lemons so they don't go into your juice. You can of course just make a regular one like this one without the little bar there. It's up to you. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how I throw a lemon squeezer like this one on the wheel and then how to trim it. I'm also going to tell you which glazes I use to glaze mine. Let's go! This is one of the projects featured in my book Pottery for Beginners. Projects for beautiful ceramic bowls, mugs, vases and more. It's available anywhere you can buy books. I'll link to it in the description below the video. The tools you're going to need for throwing the lemon squeezer are some calipers, a metal leaf knife, a bamboo knife, a sponge and a wire cutter. For this lemon squeezer, you're going to need 500 grams or one pound, two ounces of clay. I'm using an all-purpose stoneware from Bath Potters. Wedge your clay really well. Make sure there are no air bubbles. I find ram's head wedging easier with smaller amounts. Pat the clay into a ball so it's ready to throw. First off, centre the clay. Note that my foundation arm is in the crook of my hip at all times. Cone the clay up and down two to three times. Now make a wide disc measuring approximately 11 to 12 centimetres in diameter. Use calipers or a ruler to measure. Essentially a lemon squeezer is just two cylinders, one inside the other. Move over to four o'clock on your form working at approximately half an inch or 1.5 centimeters from the outside edge. Push your middle finger through the clay, stopping roughly at half a centimeter from the wheel head. This will eventually create the bowl to catch the juice. Now move back to the interior cylinder. Locate the center of the disc with your middle finger, then push straight down into the clay until you have approximately half an inch to six millimeters of clay left between your finger and the wheel. Now slowly open out the clay to create the beginnings of the inner cylinder, approximately two and a half to three inches in diameter. Take out any excess water from the internal cylinders with your sponge. Compress the base with your thumb. Pull up the interior cylinder walls. Aim to get the walls between two and two and a half inches high. Set the rim in between each pull to give it strength. Remember to take out any standing water regularly. You can check the height with a ruler and a needle tool. Now you're going to close the dome of the juicer. That's the bit that squishes into the fruit. Make sure only the outer wall of the internal cylinder is glossy with water. Be careful not to get any water inside the cylinder at this stage as once we close it up, the water will be trapped inside and may cause the base to crack during drying or even explode during the firing. Gently collar in the clay to close up the cylinder. Repeat this action two or three times to close the top of the cylinder over completely to form the dome part of the juicer. I find that leaving the tip of the dome pointed rather than rounded makes it a more effective juicer. Let me show you the same again from an overhead angle. Now you'll pull up the outer cylinder to create the bowl that catches the juice. With the wheel moving at half speed, working at four o'clock, 
Use the thumb pull to pull up the wall of the outer cylinder. Use your sponge as a reservoir to ensure the clay is glossy and there's no friction. Pull up the walls to a height of 1 to 2 inches. Remember to set the rim. Using your bamboo knife at about 45 degrees, cut away any excess clay thickness towards the base of the juicer. With your metal leaf knife, cut a channel for the wire to pass. Now you're going to create the pouring lip. With the wheel stationary, wet your fingertips and hold your thumb and index finger of your left hand against the rim, spaced approximately 2 inches apart. With your index finger of your right hand, do a small side to side motion to stretch the clay out between your thumb and finger. Shape the lip with your fingertip. Using your wire, cut the citrus juicer off the wheel. If you're throwing directly onto the wheel head, i.e. not using bats, use your sponge to soak the wheel head and use your wire again to drag through the water underneath the pot. Place your fingers towards the base of the form and slide it carefully towards the edge of the wheel. Place onto a shelf to dry to leather hard. The tools I use to trim my lemon squeezer are one of these angle loop tools, a needle, a paintbrush, a leather hard chuck. So this is just a tumbler that I threw two days ago and trimmed. It's actually one of my travel mugs and I'm going to use it to help me trim my lemon squeezer on the wheel. It doesn't really matter what you use, it just has to fit the lemon squeezer into the hole here and the lip of the lemon squeezer has to sit around the outside. So as long as it can do that, it doesn't really matter what it is. I also used one of these, which is a trimming spinner, which was given to me by Pottery Club member Tim, and I'll link to where you can purchase them below the video. Um, it's really useful, it's an excellent tool. Okay, now for trimming. Take your chuck, mug, or leather hard cylinder, and wet the wheel head a little bit with your finger. Center it carefully and push it down to create an airlock. Careful you don't squish it. Now secure it with clay sausages. This needs to be the same clay you use to make it with. Place your lemon squeezer upside down in the mug. You can use a spirit level to check it straight if you like, but I'm just eyeballing it here. You can also wet the rim of the tumbler if you wish to give it extra grip. I'll trim the base first using my loop tool angled flat against the base with my left hand supporting the form. I have my thumb of my left hand resting on the loop tool for extra stability. Now to trim the sides. I'm using Tim's trimming spinner to help me put a little downward pressure on the base of my form. This helps to keep it in place. Now because we cut away a lot of the excess clay during throwing, we shouldn't need to do a lot of trimming. Angle the loop tool down and simply tidy up the edge. I'll add a 45 degree bevel to give my squeezer a feeling of lightness. Be careful not to nick the pouring lip. If you do, like I just did here, Use your sponge and a finger to smooth it over with water. I'll burnish the base with my metal kidney. This will give it a super smooth finish. Be careful, metal kidneys can be sharp. The next step is an important one. You're going to use your needle tool to put a hole in the middle of the base. This allows airflow and steam to escape during the firing. Skip this step at your peril. Now I'm going to create a channel for the juice. Take away the tumbler and clean up any scraps of clay from your wheel head. 
so they don't stick to your nice smooth base. Carefully centre your form right way up this time. Secure with clay sausages. You can either have the juice channels as vertical lines, like on this one, or you can create a swirl. I'm going to create a swirl. With the wheel turning slowly, I use the point of my loop tool and go from the top of the point down to the juice bowl. This needs to be done in one fluid movement. The channel doesn't need to be very deep, maybe only one millimeter max. Now I'm going to show you how to add a pip catcher. This is an optional step, but I find it makes my juices better than all the others I've tried. Here I'm using an extruder with small holes. If you don't have an extruder, you can simply roll out a tiny coil. Use the same clay as the body of the juicer. Score the inside of each side of the pouring spout. Add a little water to create slip. That's clay glue. Then lay your tiny coil across where the juice will flow. The gap beneath needs to be small enough to catch the pips, so make sure you check this and adjust if necessary. Smooth over the joins with a wet finger, making sure the ends become fully integrated into the clay beneath, as this is where it's liable to crack. You can paint wax resist over the pip catcher, where it joins the form, to help slow down the drying and prevent cracking. Once bone dry, bisque fire to 1060 degrees centigrade. I'll dry out my lemon squeezer upside down using a chuck again. This helps air flow around the base and avoids S cracks. So for this lemon squeezer, I used the Spectrum High Fire Cone 5 Glaze over the top of Bath Potter's white stoneware. So the white stoneware was on, on the inside and I um, layered it up with this Lagoon. Um, spectrum glaze. Um, I only kind of single layered the lagoon on the outside just because I didn't want it to run. To get personal help from me on your own pottery journey, check out my Pottery Club, where you'll get detailed tutorials, tips, tricks and loads of recommendations, as well as a supportive community. The link is below this video. Thank you so much for watching! Love you.